Hi, and welcome to another edition of Your Health with Dr. Christy. My name is Dr. Christy Reisinger, and today I'm going to discuss monoclonal antibodies, the data behind them, how they're used, and whether you would be a good candidate for them at some point. Monoclonal antibodies burst onto the scene in October 2020 when the Regeneron antibody cocktail was used to treat President Trump when he contracted COVID-19. Initially, the monoclonal antibodies were not used much, and a report in December 2020 stated that only 5 to 20 percent of the monoclonal antibodies shipped were being used. Part of this issue was the difficulty of needing an infusion center or hospital to give the medication, since it's usually given through an IV infusion. But with time and more data, the types of treatments that are offered and how and when they're used has changed somewhat. And this has opened the door to allowing a lot more people to qualify for the treatment. There are currently three monoclonal antibody treatments that are available through the emergency use authorization from the FDA. The first is from Regeneron and combines casirivimab and imdevimab. The second is from Eli Lilly and combines BAM, lenivimab, and edisevimab. And the third is from GlaxoSmithKline and is called sotrovimab. Interestingly, BAM, lenivimab alone was initially granted emergency use authorization in November 2020, but then the FDA revoked its use in April 2021 when they realized that SARS-CoV-2 variants like the Delta variant were becoming resistant to BAM lenivimab when it was used alone. And this is why BAM lenivimab is now combined with another monoclonal antibody. This may also happen to sotrovimab as well. We'll just have to wait and see. Now let's talk about two different sets of patients that can obtain these monoclonal antibodies. The first is someone who has a documented COVID-19 infection and has had this infection for less than 10 days. They also must not be on oxygen for their COVID-19 and have an O2 sat greater than 93% on room air. You cannot be on oxygen for your COVID illness. Now, if you're already using oxygen for another reason, this is okay as long as it's the same rate of usage. If these criteria are met, then you must also be considered at higher risk for complications with your COVID-19 infection. There are lots of ways to meet the criteria, but the most common ones are age 65 or older, a BMI greater than 25, diabetes or hypertension, or if you're Latino or black. And if you go to an infusion center, you may be given any one of the three monoclonal antibody infusions that I mentioned above, although most commonly I hear about the combinations being used. The next group that can qualify for monoclonal antibodies are those that do not have COVID-19, but who have had an exposure to someone with COVID-19. And giving the monoclonal antibody less than 96 hours after exposure to prevent developing a symptomatic infection with COVID-19. This is called post-exposure prophylaxis. The people that qualify for post-exposure prophylaxis are those that are felt to be at higher risk because they're unvaccinated, not fully vaccinated, or if they're vaccinated but meet the criteria I mentioned above. These patients must receive the Regeneron cocktail since this is the only one that has shown data proving its effectiveness with post-exposure prophylaxis. So do you have to get the antibodies through an IV? Well, not necessarily. The Regeneron antibodies are available to be given subcutaneously, meaning just under the skin. But the FDA strongly recommends getting it through an IV if you're using it to treat your COVID-19 infection. However, if you're getting the monoclonal antibodies to prevent COVID for post-exposure prophylaxis, you have to receive the Regeneron cocktail antibody combination, and this can be given either with an IV or subcutaneously in four separate injections. The other two monoclonal antibody options are not available subcutaneously yet. So where can you find information on getting monoclonal antibodies? The first place to start is to call your physician. If you don't have a physician or if they're unable to assist you, then contact the Combat COVID Monoclonal Antibodies Call Center at 1-877-332-6535, or you can go to their website at combatcovid.hhs.gov. Now, let's shift our focus and look at the data behind using monoclonal antibodies. 
Well, the data showing its effectiveness started off a little slow. One of the first studies published in the New England Journal of Medicine in January 2021 studied the antibody combination by Regeneron that includes casirivimab and imdevimab. They studied 275 patients from June until December 2020. 90 patients received the high-dose Regeneron cocktail, 90 received the lower-dose Regeneron cocktail, and 93 received a placebo. This trial was interesting in that it really focused on viral load with the assumption that the higher your viral load, the sicker you will be, and that lowering your viral load will help you to recover more quickly. And they split the groups into patients who, that had evidence of SARS-CoV-2 antibodies, either from a prior COVID infection or vaccination, and those that had no evidence of antibodies. The greatest benefit with viral load reduction occurred in patients with no prior antibodies or with the highest initial viral load. They then also looked at the number of medical visits each group had, and a medical visit could be a doctor's office, the emergency room, or the hospital. They found that overall, 6% of the patients in the placebo group and 3% of the patients in the Regeneron dose groups reported at least one medical visit. But something that I thought was really weird was that they never really talked about patients' symptoms and recovery. Because overall, isn't that the most important thing? The number of days it takes before you recover from COVID? And does taking Regeneron help with that? Thankfully, after this initial data, more studies were done. A preprint study published in May of 2021 had endpoints that we all wanted to see with the Regeneron cocktail. This was the phase three portion of the trial to see if it reduced hospitalizations and death. And the data showed that it did. This is when I really think there was a seismic shift in the way physicians viewed the monoclonal antibodies. And now we're ordering them much more frequently. The data from this study showed that the Regeneron cocktail significantly reduced COVID-19 hospitalization by 71% and reduced death by 70% when compared to placebo. Furthermore, time to resolution of COVID-19 symptoms was four days shorter in both dose arms versus placebo, 10 versus 14 days. And data showed that it was safe. There were more serious adverse events happening in patients that received the placebo infusion. And then another study was published in July 2021 in the New England Journal of Medicine that looked at a total of 1,035 patients that received an infusion of the combination monoclonal antibody cocktail from Eli Lilly with bamlanivimab plus edisevimab as compared to a placebo. And the results showed benefit with this monoclonal antibody infusion. Of those that received the antibody therapy, a total of 11 out of 518, or 2.1%, were either hospitalized or died, while 36 out of 517 patients that received placebo either were hospitalized or died. And to break it down further, none of the patients that received the monoclonal antibody treatment died, while 10 patients that received the placebo infusion died. So is one monoclonal antibody combination more effective than another? Well, there's unpublished but exciting data from the University of Pennsylvania Medical Center in Pittsburgh that hints that either monoclonal antibody combination can work effectively. From March through June of this year, UPMC randomly gave either Eli Lilly or Regeneron's monoclonal antibody treatment to 1,935 COVID-19 patients. The initial data collection occurred before the Delta variant became the predominant strain in the U.S., but researchers say that both seem to work effectively in reducing deaths and hospitalizations. Their study is called Optimize C19 and is currently still underway. I'm really looking forward to seeing the data and results from this trial, and I love that a medical institution that's not tied to either pharmaceutical company is testing these monoclonal antibodies against one another. This is so important to do, and I'm thankful to the NIH for being willing to sponsor an unbiased trial like this. And lastly, the data on using Regeneron to prevent COVID-19 was recently published in the New England Journal of Medicine on August 4th which then led to its emergency use authorization being granted on August 10th. The data showed that giving the Regeneron antibodies for post-exposure prophylaxis 
prevented COVID-19 in about 1 in 18 unvaccinated patients at 28 days. And it shortened symptoms by about two weeks if patients still got sick. At the end of the day, I want to say that while these monoclonal antibodies are an exciting development in the treatment and prevention of COVID-19, I want to remind everyone that monoclonal antibodies will never replace the effectiveness of preventing COVID-19 with the vaccines we have available. Thanks for joining me.